It is the most exciting times for any comp and benefit professional you can possibly have. This is WorkSpan TV. I'm Ryan Johnson from World at Work. Today, a special case study about Rico Print Production Solutions, and the segment's called Starting a Comp and Benefits Program from Scratch. I'm joined by Art Amler from Rico Production Print Solutions. And Art, now, uh, starting from scratch may be a little bit of a misnomer in this because we're not talking about a mom and pop here. We're talking about IBM uh, and some big companies. Is that right? Right. The uh, interesting part of this is that we were part of IBM uh, as a division of IBM called the Printing Systems Division and were sold, vested to RICO and we formed a joint venture uh, of about 3,000 people. So from coming from a company that was over 300,000 down to 3,000, uh, we went from big pop to small pop, if you want to call it that, and had to start from scratch on many programs and human resources, most notably compensation and benefits. So let's go there. So the case study that we're talking about began in 2007, correct? Right. And when you say start from scratch, tell, tell us what you mean by what was the first thing that you had to do? One of the first things we had to do was to understand what we were trying to do as a company what difference was it going to mean in the marketplace that we were now an independent subsidiary of the RICO company. And so we had to come up with a culture that would fit the times and fit our business strategy. So it was a period of intense listening that we had to go through as a company. Most notably, we had to start with the CEO and his desires and then talk to employees, trying to find out what was working and what wasn't working from our heritage company, IBM. Now, when you, you started talking with the employees, you got into a conversation with the employees. Talk about that process. How did that unfold? Well, Ryan, that's very interesting because uh, it's, it's, I think, unusual to start talking to employees about compensation and benefits. Uh, some people would say, well, gee, can't you just limit that to the managers? Would employees uh, but that'd be a difficult conversation to have. And I found it to be rewarding and refreshing. We got insights that we probably never would have had if we hadn't asked the questions of employees. But the way we did it was taking focus groups, several of them, uh, to make sure we got to the various parts of the business, sales, uh, people who are working in development, people who are working in uh, the infrastructure areas, and getting feedback from them as to uh, what they thought was working and what they'd like to see change. We then bounced some of those ideas off our managers and some of the managers had different views, some had similar views, right up to the CEO. So what we found was we got a trend that went right across from top to bottom as to what would work. Now if someone's watching this and, and maybe is in a similar situation that you were in 2007, give us a sense for the amount of time that you took or that they might expect to do this employee dialogue and CEO dialogue, for lack of a better word? We didn't have much time because, to really, to get back to one of your questions already, is the first thing out of the box was to come up with a uh, performance management system to how do you appraise people in this new company. So as a result, uh, we were in a real rush to get that done. Our first job was to understand how, in this culture, did we want to appraise employees? Did we want to replicate what was at IBM? Did we want to go to a market-based practice as a hybrid of both performance and counseling? Or did you want to go strictly to a counseling type environment? You had to find what was going to fit this business going forward. I know this was across many different countries. You had legacy programs in a variety of places. You had local practices in some places. How did you tackle all of that bowl of spaghetti? it is a bowl of spaghetti <laughs> because every country has different rules. And when you go, go into a joint venture and divest from an IBM, you're divesting globally. So you have parts and pieces of uh, work being done, sales uh, being done, maintenance being done. In every country that we were operating in, almost the same number of countries that IBM was operating in, which is over 100 countries. You had to 
be right on top of uh, the people who are working on the ground on your behalf. You had to get partners and experts to help you with the country regulations. And you had to have um, a way to ensure that you weren't breaking rules and regulations culturally and legally in each of these countries. So this was a very daunting part of the responsibility. What we had to do is come up also with what was comparable. In those countries and in the US, the name of the game is comparable T's and C's. And to make sure that you were comparable, perhaps less costly, you still had to find the comparability fit and there you had to work in country with experts on the ground. But you had to go through that process. You had to build a matrix. You had to talk to a lot of people in those countries and make sure that you weren't running afoul of you know, a cultural problem or a country problem. Uh, so Art, now we're about five years after the case study began and it's been completed. What were some of the main things that you've learned? I think uh, we had mentioned already the fact how important it was to listen to all sides to get the, the, your designs correct, understand where the business strategy was. The second thing is that uh, uh, you had to have uh, great capability of uh, your people to, uh, in the, on the ground, in country, and also in your home base to help make this happen. It was a commitment that you had to recognize your staff for, you had to recognize the people who were working diligently around the clock in all these countries to make it work right. And we had to get to a market practice because you can copycat an IBM's benefits and compensation, you can copycat a RICO's compensation benefits. However, as an independent business, we had to form what was going to be profitable for us, what was going to ensure growth, particularly in areas such as the sales plan and move forward with those things that were unique for us and no longer associated with where we came from, but specific to our business. All those things were key learning points for us. So don't underestimate the amount of time or the challenge if you're starting a comp and benefits program from scratch as you did. But it can be exciting, Ryan. It is the most exciting times for any comp and benefit professional you can possibly have. And that's why we had such enthusiasm because people saw the canvas as I saw the canvas as completely clean. And so what a great opportunity this is for the comp and benefit professional to start from scratch and design something that's your canvas as long as you do some of these things that are important uh, to make it work. So it is an exciting time, one of the most exciting times in my career. A terrific case study. I want to thank Art Amler from Rico Production Print Solutions. And for WorkSpan TV, I'm Ryan Johnson.